Oh, here. We're, we're going to talk about the billionaires going to Idaho in July. The Sun Valley Summer Camp. I talked about this earlier on my, uh, on my Instagram story. This is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. You know, everybody always is upset and uh, feels some type of way about conspiracies. About how, you know, wealthy people get together and secretly decide to do certain things. Like, uh, to decide about the future of America. Or the future of the world. It's like, they're not doing it in secret, dude. There is no Bohemian Grove. Like, this is straight up, like, Bohemian Grove is just a club. It, it's a club for rich people to be gay uh, with one another at a time when they were not allowed to be gay. In the open, okay? This is the real shit. This is where they go to, to plot. They do summits. They do Davos. Okay? Is this a come town bit? No, it's not. It's not a fucking bit at all. There is no, like, Illuminati. They just do it out in the open, and people are like, no, 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 that's normal. But also Illuminati. It's like, why do you want to make something that occurs right in front of your eyes into something that is even more secretive than it actually is. Like, they don't need to hide any of this stuff. They get together and literally talk about wealth inequality and how to deal with wealth inequality. And yet people still want to, people still want to act like there is something additionally secret. So let's see what this is about. How do you know you found a super secret conference full of millionaires and billionaires in the middle of scenic Idaho? Well, you just count the private jets. This is Sun Valley, Idaho. Population 1,400. But every July, the net worth of this town gets a major boost when the Allen & Company Conference, also known as Summer Camp for Billionaires, is in session. We're heading to a conference that's so secret, it's not actually announced. There's no public guest list. There's no agenda. In fact, the only way we knew it was actually happening was by calling and finding out all the rooms of the hotel were sold out. Uh, there's a lot of people I know who think... I mean, it's like, it's not necessarily a secret. It's just that... I guess it's more secret than, like, Davos. You know what I mean? But, uh, journalists are all over this this year. I hadn't, I hadn't seen this much coverage of the Sun Valley shit this year. Uh, then, um, like, they never, they don't really talk about it like this. And they haven't really talked about it like this, uh, until this year. So I guess it's like they're just kind of popping off this year on the uh, on the conference itself, but it's not really it's not exactly a secret. I think they are big CEOs who've never been invited here. I'm really not sure how much access we're actually going to get. We've been standing right out here for hours. This is as far as we're allowed to go. The press is not allowed to go inside the building and the organizers will never confirm who's actually here. So the only way to know is actually to stand outside and watch them walk in. Tesla's Elon Musk, Disney's Bob Iger, CBS's Les Moonves, and Home Depot co-founder Ken Langone. These are yeah, it's it's for it's for like these billionaire freaks to be able to wear Patagonia vests and talk to one another about like what they're potentially going to do. Famously, last uh, or two years ago, I guess, or whenever fucking Jeff Bezos decided to buy. The, uh, the Washington Post, like, this was the conference where he decided to buy it. Um, it's, a, it's basically a all expenses paid get-together that's um, thrown by... That's thrown by a... Uh, yeah, that's the Palantir CEO? Okay. It's thrown by... Why are all billionaires bald? Because there's no cure for baldness. <sighs> it's thrown by a smaller uh bank like a smaller i think it's a hedge fund or something and uh i, I the only the only uh thing that they demand of you for throwing this is like if you put together a deal like they want to be in on it okay that's it they they facilitate the deal allen and co thank you that's the name of the bank allen and company is the the investment firm so that's what, uh, that's what this is about. Probably some of the busiest people on the planet. So I had one question. Why are they all here? There's nothing like it. This is it. Media, entertainment, special subjects they have. It's a, it's a fabulous conference. But what do you most get out of this conference? 
it's mostly about the ability to convene and to communicate directly with a lot of people. It would take me longer to get to all those people than it does here all in one place. I gotta go. Nice to see you all. We needed to be back at 6 a.m. The rich, rich equivalent of y'all yesterday at the 100 Thieves compound? I guess. Kind of. Like, I'm not going to the 100 Thieves compound to do business deals. They're there to do business deals. They're all there to do business deals with one another. I'm going to the 100 Thieves compound because I want to fucking eat free food and hang out with uh, other like people in my industry that I don't really get to see in person a lot. That comparison made zero sense. You guys just got drunk and stole G Fuel? Yeah. Well, for them, it's like they have so much power. Like these people are literally the gatekeepers of all power on the planet so obviously that's the main difference there is that they have tremendous power we do not it's like comparing comparing this to the hundred thieves content house is like comparing the hundred thieves content house uh gathering to you know your backyard barbecue which is a significantly better comparison than comparing this to the hundred thieves content house that's what it is it's a backyard barbecue to catch the attendees headed to breakfast who knows here i mean it's the morning so this is how it works they walk by sometimes they make a joke but they're not talking to us. They're not actually answering questions or revealing what's going on at the conference. Everything is treated as off the record, meaning they're not even supposed to talk about being here. Good morning. Do you have a quick second? No, I don't. Good morning. Brian Sutter from CNN. Do you have a moment for us? Talk to CNN for a moment? No. Why the fuck is Chris Christie there, dude? Like, why does Chris Christie get invited to this? What kind of feedback is Chris fucking Christie going to have? Very strange. Can you talk to us about Apple News for a moment? No? Now that's a motherfucker that's there for free food, okay? Chris Christie. Same, like if I was invited to some shit, if I was invited to an event, you bet your ass I'm there for free food. So same with Chris Christie. I don't want to say I'm giving up entirely, but I'm definitely taking a lunch break. Now, thankfully, Hollywood producer Brian Grazer saved me from a sugar overdose and agreed to talk with us off campus about what really goes on behind the scenes. People aren't here with pads and paper. Okay, he's never getting invited back. Paper, taking notes, or just getting to know each other, like getting to know how different people live, uh, different people that have expertise, understand their expertise. You know, you see all of the media titans, they're sitting at the same table. They're all hanging out. They, of course, are competing on so many different levels, but. In the very end, they all have humanity. They all under class solidarity. That's literally it. It's class solidarity. The thing that the thing that all billionaires and millionaires that are at this event, the thing that they all share is class solidarity. The thing that workers never have and never will have because the billionaires and millionaires, the capital owners that have that class solidarity do a very good job of making sure you don't. So guys, how do we fuck up the world for, uh, for the next year? No, they get together and they talk about what are we going to do about the poors that are fucking losing their minds? That's what they talk about. They talk about, uh, you know, riot tax. AKA welfare. How much welfare is actually good? How much, how much should we do to like fight back on climate change? I mean, this is not a secret either. Like they talk about this openly. If you go to Davos with a quick Google search, you can figure out like what the events are, what the, what the panelists speak about at these sorts of functions. It's, I mean, maybe with this one, you can't figure it out because it's less formal. It's not a formal event. But with like Davos and shit and, and summits, it's literally not a secret. They talk about wealth inequality and how to deal with it. The difference is when we talk about wealth inequality and how to deal with it, 
we have drastically different opinions than how they want to deal with it. And the main difference is that uh, the way that they want to deal with it is actually how wealth equality is dealt with in the end, because they have all the power. The number one Davos problem polled was fucking regulation, and the last place problem was climate change. We're all going to die. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's it. They talk about... <sighs> they talk about wealth inequality, and then, you know, hide their assets uh, in, in uh, overseas tax havens. And make sure to further deregulate the government. Understand how hard the game really is. I would love to be involved in this in any way, shape, or form. I would die to just like be able to ask questions at an event like this. It would be, it would be very interesting. They want each other to win. They want the business to win. While my journalistic pride was a little bruised, these executives are encouraged not to talk to people like me. They come here for the opposite reason, to ditch their corporate suits and have some straight talk with their peers. Whatever they're plotting, I certainly don't know what it is yet. But hey, there is always next year. I mean, I'll tell you what they fucking plotted. The, uh, the, the plot that uh, they came up with was not the business plot. Which is kind of a funny way to... <laughs> yeah. They're just doing the business plot again, dude. <laughs> but instead, instead of FDR, but to Joe Biden. Uh, so, this is from 2015. And that is, this is like ongoing this year as well. But what I was going to talk about is... Um, it's, it's still the same shit. It's at the same place in Sun Valley, Idaho. The thing that they plotted was ethical capitalism. Remember that Johnny Harris video that came out about how, uh, about how, uh, there could be an ethical stakeholder capitalism. That was the, that was what they wanted to rebrand as stakeholder capitalism, like well, reshifting the effort and energy and the fiduciary responsibility away from shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism. And, uh, you know, adding more emphasis on not necessarily the workers, but just the environment, stuff like that. That was what came uh, out of this, this conference, okay? And uh, as we all know, it's uh, not necessarily a solution. Yeah, the one that was sponsored by the writers for stakeholder capitalism, exactly. It's shit like that. It's always about how to suppress the poors, like... It's a delicate balance. Okay? It's always a delicate balance to give people enough that they don't recognize that they're pushed into a fucking corner and they have to fight their way out of it, but not so much that they are comfortable enough to rise up. Okay? If you're well-fed, you might be able to actually fight back. If you're too, if you're starving, then you might actually have no other option but to fight back. So it's always the carrot and the stick, trying to figure out that delicate balance. And uh, that's precisely what they get together and talk about. And it's not even like a, like a hidden idea. It's not like a secret. It's not a conspiracy. Some of those people legitimately think that they're, they have the right opinions in mind that they feel as though again, most of those people legitimately feel that capitalism is great and the the exploitation under capitalism is far preferable to the exploitation that you experience in the USSR or whatever the fuck and uh it, so they they honestly and earnestly feel as though their opinions are and solutions are for the better good without rocking the boat too much they don't think about it as though it, they don't think about it from the point of view of like we have so much wealth that we could single-handedly, like every person there, if they pulled together 1% of their entire net worth, just one per half a percent of their entire net worth of all the people that are there, they could solve global power. They could eradicate global poverty. Okay? So, you know, they, they don't think about that. That's out of the question. It's also not a perfect solution regardless. It would be a band-aid. 
Give a smart rich guy a thousand dollar. He will invest it and make a million out of it. Give a poor guy a thousand dollar and he will waste it on health insurance and rent. This is a troll, right? <clears throat> Like, I, I, I don't think this person is aware of what they're saying. Just invest with your money and stop being poor, lol. It's got to be a joke, right? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs>